future. Let me try to figure out how to do a screen share. Let's see. All right. Um, this talk is going to have a lot of little fake videos. Uh, they're videos of me working in my terminal because I don't trust myself to do it live. Although I don't know if there's much of a difference when we're doing it on a, on a Zoom call. But um, my talk is about making the most of your file system. So over the past few months, I've been building a search engine for programmers. And building a search engine for programmers, uh, you know, requires a lot of um, you know, static analysis of code, uh, you know, you basically treating code as data. And uh, that's what inspired this talk. So if you're, you know, since you're at Financial, you're probably writing a decent amount of code. And so your file system contains a lot of data, you know, hidden all over the place that might be, um, that contains a lot of interesting information. So in this talk, we'll see like, you know, what kind of things you can do, just knowing some very basic Python um, to extract that information off of your file system. Um, so the problem, okay, hold on, there we go. Okay, um, we'll, we'll explore, you know, what we can do with the, with the code or the data on our file systems um, with, through, through like this one specific problem that we'll solve. So um, this is actually something that I've had to do before because, you know, on an old computer, you probably have a lot of Python virtual environments sitting around. Um, you know, which ones can be kept, which ones do you want to get rid of, uh, which ones need to be updated, maybe you need to do updates from Python 2 to Python 3, you know, how do you actually plan for that. Um, the easiest way is to just write a small script which crawls your file system and looks for, looks for virtual environments and, um, you know, gives you the information that you need in order to either make the decisions or pull the statistics that you want. And that's exactly what we're going to write today. Um, it's a very, very small program. Um, and we'll, we'll basically go through it end to end uh, during this talk. Um, so yeah, so the, the basic idea, our goal is we want a program that, that runs through our file system, looks for Python virtual environments and pulls statistics about those virtual environments and just makes it easy for us to see like, you know, what, what kind of mess we've gotten ourselves into in the past in terms of writing Python programs. Um, and the other part of you know getting comfortable with your file system is getting comfortable with the utilities, the tools that Python gives you to manipulate your file system and to interact with your file system. Uh, specifically, these are the these are the concepts that we're going to talk about today. So these are uh, you know all standard Python um, you know packages, all all method methods from standard Python packages. Um, it's pretty you know we're not using any fancy stuff from Python package index or anything like that. Okay. So the first thing that we need to know is we need to know how to resolve paths on our file system. Um, uh, actually, th this is more about, um, you know, having, having a canonical way of describing paths, uh, which is really important. For example, if you run a few crawls from different root directories and then you want to combine the results, it's valuable to have uh, canonical paths for the directories that you're working with. Um, so, you know, this this code sample specifically shows what it looks like if you don't, um, you know, for example, uh, the tool that we're going to build, it's going to be a command line utility and all the commands are going to take one argument. They're going to take this dash D argument, uh, which is the directory in which we want to begin our crawl through the file system looking for virtual environments. Um, and if we if you just pass a directory in by itself um, and you run the program, the argument to your program looks like a dot, right? So if it's the, the, the current directory is just represented as a dot. Uh, okay. But if you use the uh, apps path, os.path.apps path and os.path.realpath method, methods, you can actually form a canonical uh, path to, to whatever file you're working. So that's, that's just one valuable trick to know when you're doing these kinds of analyses. Um, so this converted dot into like the full path to the directory that I was working in. Okay, good. Trick number one. Second thing is um, you might want to you know, given a directory, we need to have a function that checks whether that directory contains a virtual environment or not, right? Um, and usually a virtual environment will contain, uh, I work, 
in Linux, I, mean, I know I'm doing the screen share from a Windows laptop, it's just because Zoom doesn't work on any of my Linux machines. Um, I have a feeling that this won't work well in Windows because uh, I probably need to put .exes after all the executable files, uh, like python.exe and pip.exe. But generally, you can tell a virtual environment directory by the presence of a few directories and files, right? So if there's a python.exe in the bin subdirectory, or if there's a pybnf.config file in the directory, you know that it's, um, you know, you know that this thing is likely a virtual environment directory. Um, and so we can embed all of those checks like this. So we can say, first of all, um, a virtual environment directory must be a directory. It needs to contain a Python binary at um, the bin slash Python subpath that needs to exist. The pip binary needs to exist. Um, you know, there needs to be an activate script because that's how you that's how you actually like work in your virtual environments. Uh, there needs to be an include directory, a lib directory, a share directory, and there needs to be this pyenv.config file. Um, I construct all of these file paths using os.path.join, which is sort of the safe way to construct file paths. Again, that's something useful when you're doing, when you're sort of uh, collecting data from your file system, it's useful to know about like these utility functions, the os.path.join um, exists, is there, there's also an is file, there's also an is link, so you can check whether different uh, objects on the file system are files or directories or links. Um, you can check their permissions and so on. And uh, so basically our, our check for whether a directory is a virtual environment or not is very simple. We just check that all of these things are true. And then because I wasn't so sure of myself and was just hacking it together, I gave myself some wiggle room. So I checked that like all but two of these things were true. Okay, that's like a poor man's machine learning, right? All right, um, so let's see this in action. So first I run it on a directory that's not a virtual environment directory. This is a directory that contains my code. And it says it's not a virtual environment. And then I run it on my actual virtual environment and it says it's a virtual environment. So that's great. Okay, uh, definitely work at least on my computer. Which is... Okay, so all the, you know, so far the only thing that we've used is some knowledge of the conventions of like virtual environment creation and the path manipulation, path manipulation utilities in os.path. So uh, very, very useful tools. They will get you like pretty far if you're, if you are sort of crawling your file system and doing interesting things. Um, next, what we want to do, uh, you know, to build our program, remember what we were trying to do was build a program that scans for all the virtual environments in some root directory and then pull statistics about them, right? So the next thing we need to build is, uh, you know, the functionality which just walks through the file system and looks for those virtual environment directories. So we definitely have, oh, uh, the indentation got completely messed up over here. So this doesn't look like any Python function I know of. Uh, I think these, these just need to be indented to the right one bug. But um, basically we use, the, Python has an os.walk function. Most programming language will, languages or will have some sort of a library that gives you this functionality of being able to walk through a file system. In Python, it's os.walk. Uh, what os.walk does is you specify a root directory that you wanna walk through, and then you can iterate over, uh, you can basically iterate through the walk, and at each step, um, you, you know, the, the, the object that you, you iterate over a three tuple of the, the path that you're currently on the subdirectories of that path. So these are strings that describe the paths of these subdirectories relative to the path that you are at. And then the argument that I actually don't use in my walk is a list of file names. So this is a list of file names uh, in this directory. So these are directories and these are files, all, can, all paths relative to this dir path. And basically what we wanna do, what we are doing over here is we walk through the root directory at every step we check if each subdirectory is a virtual environment. If it is a virtual environment, we walk no further. We're making the assumption that a virtual environment directory doesn't contain a virtual environment subdirectory. I think that's a safe assumption. I, I may have accidentally created a virtual environment inside a virtual environment uh, before, but uh, very rarely, I hope. Um, although this program wouldn't be able to tell. Um, so yeah, the, basically we're just walking through the file system um, recursively and checking where the virtual environments are. 
and just returning that as as a list of uh, list of canonical paths. So it's actually important over here that we're returning it as a list of canonical paths. Okay, so we can again check that out. It actually runs pretty quickly. It runs pretty quickly because we're ignoring the directories that are virtual environments. If we didn't ignore them, it would take a little bit longer. Okay, so this is the directory that I use for all, all of my like work work, and uh, I have you know, five virtual environments in there. Great. Okay, <clears throat> so os.walk, a very handy tool when you're trying to locate data on your file system. And then finally, we need to do an analysis of a virtual environment. So the kind of statistics I want to pull uh, that I decided to pull as part of this program were to get the Python version, the pip version, and what the installed dependencies were. There are a few ways you can go about doing this. So for example, you can pull Python version information from the pyvnv.config file inside a virtual environment directory. Um, for dependencies, you can look in requirements.txt or setup.py. But uh, I decided that um, you know I wanted to go right to the source of the truth, which was the Python executable and the pip executable, the, the binaries. Um, so the way that I pull the statistics over here is by just directly executing Python dash dash version, pip dash dash version, and pip freeze in sub processes uh, in each of the virtual environment directories, um, with some care to like you know. For, it, it, lots of different errors can occur because you know you might not have permissions to run those binaries or um, I mean I don't know what else could but lots of things could go wrong you could just like you know go and deviously delete like various things inside your virtual environment directory to cause problems so um, you know you have to leave room for errors but uh, but this is basically doing something very simple it just takes a virtual environment directory and it runs python dash dash version pip dash dash version and pip freeze and let's see this in action. Okay. Doesn't take very long and you get you get output that basically looks like this. Um, great. And then the final thing that we want to do is given a collection of uh, you know virtual environments or given some root directory we want to collect statistics about all of the virtual environments inside that root directory and this just involves um, running the previous function over each of those uh, you know over each of those uh, identifying the virtual environments running the previous function over each of those virtual environments and then aggregating the statistics which is all that we're doing over here this is most of the logic over here is just aggregation logic um, and this is what it looks like. This, this, this one takes a little bit longer to run. Um, this one takes about, um, you know, over those five virtual environments, I think it takes like six or seven seconds to run, um, mostly because it's creating those, uh, it's actually like running the Python binary and the pip binary in each virtual environment and it spits out output like this, um, which isn't very meaningful if you're looking at me like replayed on my terminal, but uh, could be more meaningful you know, if you run it yourself. You can do more analysis on that JSON object if you want. Um, so yeah, that's, um, you know, that's, that's about it. That just shows you like the kind of stuff that you can do analyzing the data that's present on your very file system. Um, if it, on the uh, on the other end of things, you know, getting comfortable with your file system, there's a few other utilities that I use all the time, and this is what they are. I didn't really have an opportunity to use them for this particular program, um, but a lot of you know a lot of tools, a, a lot of really useful tools that you might even have to pay money for. Like this is essentially the kind of stuff that they're doing, and so you know I hope I hope this gives you the confidence to do this uh, to to build these these kinds of analytical tools yourself. It's very easy, especially if you're using Python. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my talk. Uh, you can find this presentation online if you want. Uh, if I have a request, actually, you know, I'm building the search engine for programmers. You guys are programmers. I'd really love if you guys try it out. It's in alpha right now. It's alpha.bugout.dev. Um, please try it out. I'd love to have your feedback and thank you for listening.